That's right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is the 9 by 9 the 81 square meters of the best volleyball coverage on the internet. My name is Rob St. Clair, live from Chicago in the United States. That is Everett DeLorme, live from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And for the first time, Everett, probably in the history of the show, we have breaking news that we are breaking here on the 9 by 9 uh, first heard to the public. This is a big one. This one ben hurts. Josephson has been fired as the head coach of the Canadian men's national team. Yes, after less than a year at the head of the program, Ben Josephson has been fired as the head coach of the Canadian men's national team. Uh, this has been confirmed by Volleyball Canada, but not released to the public just yet. This is the first the public is hearing about it right now, and we are stunned. We are stunned. Everett, I, I, I don't, I don't even really know where to begin with this. Uh, this is your guy. This is Canada's guy. I, can, we were huge fans of this hire when the decision was made in November, and I have, I cannot believe that Volleyball Canada uh, pulled the trigger on this change in less than a year. Yeah, I'm, to be honest, quite shocked um, when the news came across. Um, you know, I got a message yesterday, um, and uh, I it kind of knocked me off my kilter for a little bit. Um, it was something that I wasn't expecting whatsoever, um, and it... I think this one hurts and we're, we're obviously going to get into it now uh, a little bit because, you know, Robin, you and I have been talking a bit about it for about 40, 24 hours now. Um, I've known for a little bit more than that. So it's been, a, you know, and I've spoken to, spoken to some people and, and, and some, and some stuff, stuff like that. Um, and I mean, Hey, let's, let's, let's start it from the beginning that this, this was not by any means a successful season. And I think he himself would be the first one to admit that uh, going, what was it like three and 12 this year, 15th at VNL. Like you, we missed, like didn't get relegated and that's good. Uh, and then 17th at the world championships is not ideal and not what anyone would have wanted. Um, you know, and I definitely think that, you know, had he been around for another year, changes would have been made. I mean, I think everyone can agree that maybe the rate of change that we were trying to accomplish was maybe too too much, too fast. Um, and that, you know, somewhere in the middle needed to be found. Um, but let's 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 put this in perspective just a little bit because you're absolutely right. It was not a good summer for the Canadian men. And there were a lot of changes that Ben Josephson and his staff were trying to instill or yeah, try, I mean, there, there was they they really were kind of breaking things down and building that team's system but like, their, their, their on-court system from the ground up but here here are the things about this because we are we, we you you said it pretty well right after the world championship after canada finished 17th didn't make it out of pools that there's going to be some adjustments made exactly like you said at the, the rate have of change, have to have been yeah absolutely. because the because like ben Joe. Right, because like Benjo told us when we were talking to him at VNL in Ottawa, the goal of his, his his goal and the goal of the Canadian men's national team is to win Olympic medals. Mm -hmm. And what we saw this summer, they were not at they were not improving at a rate that they were going to even maybe yeah. even get to the Olympics. But I mean, yeah, let's, to... let's let's give me give me give me a second here to yeah uh, to, to to get into this um, because yeah, I, I think one like. Before we get into any of that, I think we also need to look at what the roster was for this season right. and what we had coming back. I mean, it's it's almost akin to like if if you're a race car driver and and you're being like, hey, you know what? We're going to give you a model that's a few years old uh, because that's that's all we have right now. You know, we this this team before Gord Perrin and Graham Vigrass were playing on it consistently and Gord Perrin, you know, a little bit longer before Graham Vigrass was losing to Puerto Rico. We were ranked 27th in the world. Like we were an afterthought in, in, in interna international volleyball, right? And absolutely, Glenn Hogue has a massive amount to do that. But so do those athletes that, that built that program. There has never been a bigger, like a bigger re, a rebuild year than this year. 
right? So just on that alone, right? Not 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 to take into account that the fact that we have one of our best liberos, Blair Band, who's who's been injured, our you know best setter on on paper, Jay Blanken now, who's also injured and and battling battling through through injuries. Nick Hogue was was injured the the entire time. We had guys dealing with COVID. Like there was a lot of lot of stuff going on. But at the same, think, like, it, think it, about it, who the Olympic starting lineup was just last year. Absolutely, and it was how a many of those, and how many of those guys roster. were either retired from the Canadian national team or were not in the mix this summer. Blair Ban, huge, huge, huge loss. You can't even imagine how much better that team's first contact would have Lord, been. Shawan Vernon Evans is Shawan, a big, absolutely. is a big loss. Gord even Aaron, no, Graham no Ligress, Stephen Marshall for the most of it too. Like no, T.J. Sanders. No, I mean, come yeah. on. It, it was a massive, massive rebuilding year, but like this, this, this was the time to make this move, right? This was the time to m- make a move to a new coach and, and, and to a new system. And in, in my opinion, and a lot of the people that I spoke to that they had made the right choice, right? Everyone knew that there was going to be a, a rebuilding year. Right. This is Every, last this, November this, when they were going through the higher hundred like yeah. percent. Right. Everyone knew they were going to be going going through a rebuilding year. Everyone knew it was going to be tough with without a lot of these guys. We had we had to rebuild rebuild basically f- from the ground up. But having been there for the Pan Am Cup, seen the B team in action, you know the junior team, unfortunate loss to to, to Mexico uh, in the, in the semifinals. But other than that, like two wins over Cuba uh, at at the the North Seekas or Pan Am Cup, whatever, whatever that that event was, like. It's good things that are happening at the junior level, and Ben Josephson has had a direct contact with that, with direct contact with the youth and junior programs in the, the in the previous years. But as 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 much as as much as all of the like, as much as I think he deserved hundred percent to see through at least like this isn't even a real quad; it's three years. Right? Exactly. It, like it, it's a mini quad. Like who do, who do we have to impress? Do you think Mizuno's sitting there tapping their foot, being like, "Hey, we need better," you know, like we be, we need better uh, results from you guys? Like, no, none of, our, none of our sponsors care, right? But like, w- how bad does this look on a program? This is a step backwards for the program, in in my opinion. Now we're two years out from the Olympics. The co- the the Olympic qualification process is starting this year, and we don't know who the coach is going to be. Like, furthermore. The, the coaches is they're going to be reviewing candidates from the the short list of last year's r- runners up. And, and do you think those guys are necessarily going to want this job now? You gave the guy, the guy who was a quote unquote number one in your list less than a year with, with less than a squad to do, to do something to, to be perfectly honest, this is maybe the worst move I've seen from volleyball Canada in my time involved with, with volleyball in Canada. This is, it, it, it's, it's a it's, huge step back. It's, it's a, a huge massive step, step back. back. And we've got, we've got to look at this from a, a little bit bigger of a picture, because like you said, it is a, it's not even a real quad there. It's a, it's a three year goofy window. A pandemic pushed the Olympics back. Uh, Glenn Hogue retires. You bring someone in uh, to see at least through the Olympic games in Paris, 2024, get there and or try to get there and see what you can do. If you get there, there but the whole time there's got to be some level of communication or synergy between the volleyball canada organization and the guy that they hired to do this job and firing ben josephson this early tells me that there is a huge break in the system somewhere there is no way that Ben Josephson would have approached this first year the way he did with the players that he did if he had known that his leash was going to be this short. Do you agree? Yes and no. I mean, to be perfectly honest, I know where the the, the link breaks, but I'm not willing to get into that here and now. Um, you know, just 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 for a lot of reasons. I mean, I have I have my own opinions on that based on being involved in some ways or another with this organization for the past decade or so. Um, but, uh, I think that, I think that, you know, this is making me think back to a lot of conversations that I had with people, not Ben Joseph himself, but people within kind of his like inner circle, his, his friends and people like that, just being, you know, the, 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 the cons, the consistent question from them was cons- consistently like, are they going to give him a chance? And 
in my mind at the time, I was just like, yeah, absolutely. Give him a chance to like Paris. We'll see how it goes. You know, three years, that, that should be enough. Like we'll, we'll be fine. But I'm starting to wonder now if that meant, is, are they going to give him enough of a chance this year? Right. And I wonder if he kind of always knew that, that he was under the hot seat and that, you know, it was, it was this serious, but I also think at the same time, Ben Josephson is Ben Josephson and he's going to do things his way. Um, and I think he deserved a chance to do things his that's, way. Like, I, you, like, look at the way he absolutely dominated U sports over the past 10 years. Look at how he's created athletes for the next level. How many Olympians have come out of that Trinity Western program, right? Like, They've, they've beaten the best teams in the NCAA. They've done it consistently. They've raised the level. Ben Zosism has raised the level of Canadian volleyball, right? And it seemed perfect because you get Glenn Hogue raising the level of Canadian, Canadian volleyball at the international level. And he had Ben Josephson and guys like Terry Daniluk and Brock Daviduk and Mike Hawk and, and Dave Preston raising the level up at the U sports level. Right. Like Preston and, and Daniluk, those were guys who have been there for a long time and legends like, you know, Pascal, same, same thing. And you had Ben Joseph come in and bring a brand new team like before Trinity Western, like when Benjo played for Trinity Western, they were a college team. They weren't even a university team. Right. And then he took them over and made them the best university team, arguably of all time. Right. And we give him not even a year. Like what, what confidence does this put to, to, to Canadian volleyball from Volleyball Canada in our system? This is the best guy we've had. This is the guy who's won the most. This is the guy who's produced the best players. Also for the beach game, looking at Kame Schalke, how he's probably going to be the on you know USA one. That's a Trinity Western Spartan right there. Like what are we doing out here that we're letting our best guy and giving him like you know like one at bat? That's that's all he got. One at he, bat. He got one at bat. Right? My questions are: What if 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 you if you pull the trigger now on firing Ben Josephson? Where else are you gonna go? Who else are you gonna get? Like after, Mark Lebedew? I I if I were Canadian, I would hate that hire. Like, like I would you, I would hate bringing in anybody else, anybody who's not Canadian to lead this team. I do not think that will be well received in that locker room. Yeah, it's but like well, once again, like there's one person, in my opinion, and, and within my relation to the to this game in this country, that is universally respected. Even the people who hate him respect him. Looking at you, Brandon Bobcats. Um, <laughs> but like, like I, there was like, like that was what it was so exciting when I was there in August for the Pan Am Cup. You had so many different different coaches from different facets of, of Canadian volleyball coming together for, for this national team in a way that we've never seen before. Like now what are we going to do? We're going to sit here like either it's Ho going to come back and we're going to bring, bring back the old, old guard, which like I, it's not the worst idea in the world, but like how, how much further does that bring us? Like it brings us to Paris and then what? Right. Right. And right. then, or we go international to someone who doesn't understand our systems, doesn't understand our culture, and does doesn't understand our players. Right. Furthermore, how many players did we just alienate from our program? How many former Trinity Western Spartans do we have in this program? Ryan Slater, Eric Lepke, um, Lucas Van Burkle, like Derek Epp. You know, we're not going to get into the Elsers and stuff like that because I think that's a big question mark for some people. But the, still, there's there's people who make serious con contributions to this team. Stephen Marshall, who are former Trinity Western Spartans. Now for a guy like Sclater, who's like kind of on the, in, the, in the later years of his career. Guy for like Stephen Marshall, who's also in these later years of his career. What, what do, do they want to come back? Right. Marshall wanted to go play beach last year. Like. But. You know, what's next? I think this is, as I said, I think this is a serious step back for Volleyball Canada. I think it's a serious step back for the men's national team. And I think that this is going to have seriously negative repercussions for uh, the game. And there's, I've, like, I feel like I've lost something, you know? Like, I like I feel like I've lost someone in my family. Like, there's been a death in the family. And you know, like one one side of it is that I'm 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 sad for Benjo, and you know I just said like I think he he deserved a chance, and I don't think that was given to him. But on, on the other side is that I don't see what's next. I don't That's... see what 
Like, 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 like that's where I'm at too. I don't understand where they go from here and what the trajectory is for the next couple of years because you've just had a year where you've broken everything down in an attempt to build it back up from the ground up. And Ben Josephson was again trying to install a very technical system and identity of playing volleyball and when those of us who watched the canadian team play this summer saw how it went it did not go very well on the court there were a lot of growing pains but now you're gonna have to start all over again you're gonna have to start all over again in a year where you're trying to even qualify for the olympic games not that there is no reason to assume that canada is going to get to the olympic games at this point but then thinking after Paris and thinking at the lower levels, I think you made a great point about emphasizing how how important Ben Josephson was to Canadian youth sports and to the junior and youth national teams in his less than a year as head coach. Those that's where your the real future of your program is going to come from. And if you just bring in somebody, somebody, some non-Canadian, or bring Glenn Hogue back, or God forbid, go get Mark Lebedew for some reason. If you bring in somebody like that even if they manage to band-aid fix the senior national team, every level below that in Canadian volleyball is going to suffer significantly. Because we, we don't, don't yeah, understand. We don't have a head of, head of the program anymore, right? And, and that's, that's the thing is that there was no doubt about it that when Glenn Hogue was the head coach of the national team, he was the head of the program, right? right? And, he, and, he, and he oversaw kind of, kind of everything. And that was what Ben Josephson was doing but tenfold, right? Because remember, Benjo wasn't doing like what Hogue was doing and, and going off and, and coaching professionally over the year. Like he was going to be a full-time head coach and was going to be putting his time back into Canadian volleyball, like boots on the ground here in, in right. the non-national. He months. left his job yeah. at Trinity Western to do this. Yeah. So it's, I mean, let, let's be honest. Uh, I'm sure Trinity Western would have him back with open arms, but I mean, let's 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 not sit here and speculate what what he's going to do next. I think that he needs to take some time to, you know, be with his family and 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 through this. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, and I, I I'll, I'll say this: I haven't had any confirmation from any any players of the team, but from what it sounds like, I I, I don't never saw any. Like this wasn't a Lebedew situation. This is to refer to the comment uh, in the in the the uh, chat right now. I don't think this was a Lebedew situation, right? And I mean, we spoke to like like Rob, you were there at VNL, and we spoke to guys, and we saw the buy-in. We saw the buy-in from guys like Stephen Marr and Nick Hoke, right? Right. We we, we saw the buy-in from 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 everyone, top to bottom. And yes, it was it was difficult, and yes, it was tough, and yes, we can argue all day if, if 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 it was the right move or not, and what what could have been done differently. But at the end of the day, there was buy-in. Right? There's no dissent w- within within the ranks from what we saw, and and from what I've, I've other people I've spoken to, you know, um, ha- have seen as as well to people who are who are also close to the, to, to the men's national team. Um, so yeah, I I think that this is just ultimately uh, a a bad a bad bad move by Volleyball Canada. Um, at least give them the three years, give them the three years to, or you know what, if it, if it comes to the point where like, even like after this next year, it wasn't looking, but like give them that at, at least, you know? Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know. It's it, there's, there's such a huge disconnect in the logic of this move because of how this summer was approached. There's no, I, I, I am convinced that there's no way Ben Josephson would have broken everything down to build it at such a level. If he had even any suspicion that his leash might be less than a year, if, if, if there, he, his focus was entirely on the process, not the product. Obviously, I mean, we saw the product. The product wasn't very good. If he had known, if he had gotten any feedback from Volleyball Canada that he needed to immediately put more emphasis on the product, I feel like he would have. And I feel like this is, he, he did not get the chance to do that because this obviously was the year to focus on the process, not the product. Even though it was a world championship year, again, the Olympics were just last year. It's a weird part in the calendar. Glenn Hogue just retired again but like and on top of that when you look at our roster right like we don't have a what roster to make a run anymore to do yeah we, exactly. we don't we don't we don't have a roster to make a run anymore and 
I have like, like I've watched the growth of this sport in this country over the past 10 years. And it's been phenomenal. And that's why, you know, if I look at the junior teams and I look at that, that B team that we've got, like, I'm very, very excited about the talent that we have coming up, but there's, there's a bit of a lull right now. Right. And we can, we can argue and maybe the fact that there wasn't a, there, there wasn't as much of an influx of young talent to the national team and, and, and here or there, I, I think some of it has merit, some of it, some of it doesn't. Um, but you know, that's just the reality of it. Like we, we, during VNL, like we had, it was painfully clear that we lacked guys with, with serious international talent and serious international experience. And there was only one way to do that. And that was to get it right. That, 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 that was to get it, but this isn't, you know, 2011 where we're not in the world league and we're, we're, we're trying to qualify it. Like we were still in the VNL. We're still amongst the best teams in the world. Like we still have, however many guys playing professionally in, in, in the best teams in, in, in the world, like the bounce back was, was going to be able to happen. Um, and now it's, uh, now it's to, to me, it's just like, where, where do we go from here? And I mean, Hey, like part of me, part of me is willing to give volleyball Canada some of the benefit of the doubt. Like maybe there's a plan there. What what could it be? What what what? That's that's my question. First of all, this looks terrible globally. The as as if volleyball Canada didn't are like if, if as if the reputation of Canadian men's volleyball didn't already have a rough enough summer. This makes it look way worse. And my real question is, who's going to take this job now? Either it's somebody who wasn't your top choice last November, who you didn't give the job to last year. Why would they feel? all of a sudden valued enough to take the job now or even if it, even if you go out internationally and get somebody else why would anybody feel that this is a secure position now they just hired the best possible choice in all of canadian coaching and fired him in less than a year why is this a job that anybody's going to want and what kind of confidence does it give the rest of canadian volleyball exactly right? once again this is our best guy this, this is the, the the guy who's who's done the most for volleyball in this country with within the, within these borders like the 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 contribution that Glenn Hogue has made is, is is immeasurable right and his effect on the sport in this game is is like Mount Rushmore type like George Washington type of like stuff he will forever be the Godfather for for more ways than one but at a certain point we need to build on to that you know. Like we need to build on on the shoulders of giants, and we have one of the most stable stable bases to go off of because of what Ben, because of what Glenn Hogue and this team has created over the past decade. But we got to move somewhere forward, and why not go with the person who's been the best coach, the best coach in Canada over the past decade, and who has a who has a definitive vision. You may not agree with that divi- that that. that 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 vision and you you may you know you, you may have issues with some of the players had, that he picks to do that and, and and so on and so forth but he deserved he deserved the chance at least at least the three years how oh, and just just two question but no question the the and fi- firing coaches is something i've always kind of disagreed with it doesn't it, it at the end of the day unless there's something truly toxic going on there it doesn't produce the quick results as fast as you want it to and that, where are you going to go now? I just don't understand that. And there, there's a question in the chat. Is there a possibility that Gord Perrin and Graham Vigas are behind this like a Slovenian situation if they come back with a new coach? Absolutely not. And I'm not Canadian. I don't know anything. But I was there in Ottawa. I was there at the, at the end of VNL when Gord Perrin, Graham Vigas, Blair Ban, Stephen Marshall, all those guys were there. And they were celebrating Ben Josephson's first career win. They were celebrating. They were so much a part of the program, even though they weren't directly at that moment a part of the program. There is no way, and and ever you know more than I do. From my perspective, I did not see any dissension or infighting in the locker room. You're right. You said the buy-in was there, and it was. And it was not easy to have bought into that new system, which was very difficult. It took established guys, broke them completely down, and it produced bad volleyball. But those guys bought in anyway. And it, it just has to come from me from a place of lack of communication or clearly misguided or misaligned direction between Benjo and the team and Volleyball Canada. And I do not understand where they go from here. So 
I, buddy, I'm sorry. I feel for you. I, I feel, I feel like a loss too, because I was there that week and I got to know Ben Josephson and I got to know all the guys. And even though it didn't show up on the court, I felt it. I felt it where I, I believed in it. I believed that what they were doing was going to work. And it, this just feels like a massive, massive step backward. It does. It, it leaves the men's national team in this limbo that uh, I've never seen before. Uh, I've never experienced. Um, and I'm, I'm worried. Um, I'm not worried because I'm the only thing that, that reassures me is because I know the quality of athlete that's coming through um, the systems right now. And I know the growth of the game in this country and, you know, the athletes that we're getting at, at the youth levels is phenomenal and clubs are doing a great job and, and universities are doing a great job and, and colleges and, and, and whatnot. But I am seriously worried about the direction of the, the men's national team. Um, and I, I don't see what the next step is here. I, I, I really don't. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly worried, not only for Paris, but for anything past that. Yeah. Point in the chat, Canada is an average team. You have to accept it. I don't agree with that at all, and that's not the point of this conversation. You're not understanding that there's so much more to this than the win-loss record of the senior national team. There's way, way more to it than that, as we've just gone over, and uh, saying that Canada has no chance ever to be better than they are is extremely short-sighted and i disagree so yeah and i mean there's there's one thing that i do, I do want to address also the, uh, the, the chats is maybe a brazilian or an italian coach can make canada goes better in the competitions okay that's from a brazilian no. guy so but yeah it's like, I, like, guy. I, no, I do i i want to no but I, I want to address that and like yeah there's 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 no denying that there there's probably better coaches out there and i mean it, for for me, like if, if we look at a guy like Benjo, it's not necessarily better in terms of like how smart he is or how prepared he is or anything like that. It's just level of knowledge at the international game and experience at the international game. Like there's there's no doubt that there's people out there that could help us. But the reality is is that they don't want to coach in Canada. The, the reality is is that we can't pay someone enough to come coach here, right? And the reality is that if we can, it's someone who is like Stefan Antigua who has to do it full time year round and coach professionally d during the year and then come coach in Canada d during the year. And it's it's to be honest, it's it's not easy to coach in Canada, so especially for a lot of a spot, a lot of a lot of Europeans. So there's there's a lot of there's a lot of issues there for me. And I think we've seen the the I think we've seen with over the past few years before before Tom Black and now Shannon Windsor what it was like having international coaches on the women's side. And the, we got very lucky with Stefan Antigua because he knew our system because of his relationship with Glenn Hogue. And that isn't easily recreated. So going, going internationally here is, is, is difficult. But at this point, it's the, the only option. The only, only other option I see is maybe Dave Preston doesn't want to, you know, spend his, spend his summers in Australia anymore. And he wants to come back and, and coach the national team. That's the but, one, the but one I, thing that I was thinking of is I, can I, they... I, I see that as a lateral move at, at best. And with all, all due respect to Dave and uh, I love, you know, love him a lot. And I love what he's done with McMaster and what he's done for this game. He's just, he's, I, I don't know if he has the vision that, that this, this program needs. And I thought, I know Ben Josephson has that not only at the national team level, but, but all the way through. And I think this is a, this is a, a, a bad day for Canadian volleyball. This this is a bad day for Canadian volleyball, and it's it's a shame. And I'm I'm sorry we had to spend so much time on it, but uh, it was a huge piece of news that we'll obviously follow along with as the Canadian men are now back to where they were about a year ago and searching for a new head coach. So we will keep our uh, ears to the program and let you guys know when we know something. But uh, this uh, I know it's a difficult one to talk about right now.